Hello, my name is Kishwani. That's K E S H W A N I, Kishwani. Today we'll discuss the notion of homonyms. What are homonyms? Homonyms, as we learned in the first part of our series, are words that have two words and sometimes three words that have different spellings, they have different spellings. They have different meanings, but for some strange and inexplicable reason, they are pronounced in the same way. They have different spellings, different meanings, but they have the same pronunciation. In part number one, we did one through nineteen. Today, we're going to pick up from number twenty. So let's get going, shall we? Number twenty. Here are two words: bear and bear. They have the same pronunciation. Pronunciation is very straightforward. They have the same pronunciation there. Tell you what, why don't we why don't we put down the pronunciation at the bottom here? Same pronunciation as I said, which is why they call homonyms. But this bear here is an adjective. What does it mean to be bear? B A R E. It means to be, to be, to be naked. To be naked. To be exposed. It can be used literally, as in bare feet, or it could be used metaphorically, as in you might describe something as a bare facts or bare suggestion or bare bare thoughts, and so on and so forth. What does this pair mean? This pair is a verb, which means to to tolerate, to tolerate, to to handle something. If you can handle something, are you able to handle it? Can you bear it? Are you able to bear it? To to stomach it. That's another way of saying it. If you can stomach something, if you're able to stomach something, you can tolerate it, you can handle it, you can bear it. To to endure something, to endure something. And finally, to to be able to brook something. Brook, as you, as you probably know, is the word. Is the word we learn in day four, in day four our vocabulary lessons. There are 75 videos so far. On day number four, in the vocabulary series, we learn the word brook, which means to be able to handle something, to bear something, to tolerate something, to endure something, to be able to stomach something. If you are able to brook it, that bear. And this bear, and of course there is a third bear, which is also B E A R, same spelling as that one, but that's a noun, and that's the animal. Of course you know that already. So that's the first one. These are homonyms: bear and bear. Bear as in exposed, as in naked, and bear as in to be able to handle something. Let's move on then. Number twenty-one. Number twenty-one. Number twenty-one is a very straightforward one. We have flower. We have flour and flour. A flour as in the flour that one buys to make bread, and flour as in W E R. That's another one. Let's go to number 22. Let's go to number 22. We have horse as in the animal horse, obviously, which is very straightforward pronunciation. Horse. And of course, we also have this horse, H O A R S E, horse. What does it mean? What does this word mean? H O A R S E, horse, same, same exact pronunciation as the animal horse. Horse is described, horse is used to describe sound. It means low and grating sound. Low and grating sound. It means if it means a husky sound. Now when I put something when I put something in, in capital letter, when I put something in capital letter, that's my way of telling me, uh, that's my way of telling you that if you do not know these words, look them up and learn them yourself because of course I don't have a luxury of going through every single word that crops up here. So you're going to have to learn it. Low and grating sound, husky sound. 
Today, before I forgot it, today is our second lesson. Second lesson in the series of six. There are going to be six of them. Two of six. Let's keep, keep on going. How else can we describe it? We can also describe a hoarse sound. We can describe it as a as a as a low pitched sound. A low pitched sound is called hoarse. Let's go on then. Number twenty three. Number twenty three is also very straightforward. Number twenty three is simply B and to B. B and B. Number twenty four. Blue as in the blue color and also blue. To he blew something up as in the past tense. Past tense of blow. He he blew up. He blew up the or whatever he blew up, which is the past tense of blow. Blue and blue. Twenty four. Let's go on to number twenty five. Number twenty five will have red again as in color, just like blue. Blue as in color. Red as in color and. And red as in past tense, past tense of read. As you know, past tense of read, past tense of read is spelled in the same way, R E A D, but it's pronounced as red. Same pronunciation as the color red. Let's carry on. Number 26. Number 26. Let's change that to 2 of 5. I might not even get to. I might not even get to part 6. I have altogether 80 of them. I have altogether 80 homonyms. I'm going to do a few in each uh, videos. I'm not sure whether it's going to take 5 videos or 6 videos. We'll see. Let's move on. Number 26. Q U I T E. Quiet. And Q U I E T. Quiet. They both mean the same thing. Uh, they, they, they both have the same pronunciation. This one means, this, this quiet, the TE means complete. And this one of course means to be silent. To be silent. The way I remember, uh, the way I remember, the way I keep them separate, this quiet separate from this quiet, is that this one, I remind myself that this one ends in a TE, and so does complete. Complete ends in a T E. So that's that's my mnemonic. That's my mnemonic device to keep myself that's my mnemonic device, that's my memory device that helps me remember which one is which one means what. The one that ends with T E means complete because complete with the ends of the letter T E and this one is silent. Let's carry on then. Now to be fair, I am not quite one hundred percent sure some native might some natives might disagree with me that the pronunciations are not the same. They sound the same to me. I don't know. I may be wrong. Number twenty seven. Extent as in to what extent, the range of something, to what extent, and this extent. Something that we learned in our vocabulary lesson again on day number 14. In the series of vocabulary we learned this extent which means, which means still, still, still existing. It is the antonym, it is the antonym of extinct. If something is extinct, if something is extinct, it no longer exists, and if something that still exists, we describe that species as extent. Dinosaurs are extinct, we are not, we are extent. Rabbit, horses and cats are not extent, not extinct rather, are extent. Dinosaurs are extinct. They no longer exist. 
they have ceased to exist. They are extinct. We are extant. Let's carry on. Number 28. E I G H T 8 and 8. They have the same pronunciation. 8 as in the past tense, past tense of eat. I ate 8 apples. I ate 8 apples. Not 7 of them, not 6 of them, 8 of them. Number 29. I as in your I and I as in first person pronoun. First person pronoun as in the first is misspelled. I don't know how to, what to do with me. F I R S T first person pronoun as in I am reading. I and I. The, the I and myself I. Let's carry on. Number 30. Number 30. Dear and dear. Dear and dear. I'm going to change my mind one more time. We're going to, let's just say part two, how many, I don't know how many parts I'm going to have. Part two, that's what is, that was it. That was the end of part two. I'm not going to do too many of them, because otherwise it will get to be too long of a video. Okay, bye now.